Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Pyatt and welcome to my YouTube channel. My goal is to help as many martial artists as possible in their journey and study of Fujitsu, whether you are a complete beginner or an experienced martial artist. I do videos every Friday, so if you like and enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe to get more just like it. This video, we are going to start by having a look at how we use basic Japanese in the dojo. So this video is intended primarily for beginner students, but maybe of interest to more experienced students who just want to brush up on some basic Japanese, perhaps pronunciation, uh, which is certainly something I need to continue to brush up on. So what we're going to cover is some words that you will absolutely hear echoing in the halls of dojo everywhere. This is language that if you understand these basics, you can apply it over and over and over again for lots of different techniques. Um, so we're going to cover basic pronunciation uh, for um, the key sort of sounds in Japanese. We're going to cover different types of technique. We're going to cover some basic sort of words that we hear very frequently, so some directions and then heights. So that's the kind of thing we're going to cover. We're going to put it in context and give you some examples as we go. Okay, so let's start off with pronunciation. So in Japanese, the pronunciation of the sounds um, goes as follows. There are five sort of main sounds uh, we, we sort of use repeatedly in the alphabet. So the basic vowels on their own, so we have A in English, but in Japanese it's pronounced A. So you, if you're sort of reading A at any point in your head, sort of think A, ah, right? So I in English is pronounced E. Okay, so think of like key, for example. So any I sound, we say of an E. U um, in English, so we have A, E, U. It's the same sound uh, in Japanese. Obviously in English you can have the different sound of U, but in Japanese it's just U. So U uh, is the sort of sound that we're using for U. E is pronounced e. Right? Okay, so e. And then lastly, o is o. Okay, so o, but hold the sound slightly. Okay, so we have the basic sounds a, e, u, e, o. Now, each of those sounds you can then apply to the next level of the, the alphabet. So if you were learning to speak Japanese, you would practice saying these sounds re reasonably quickly and then put like the next set of letters on. So uh, usually we go a, e, u, e, o, and then the next would be ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. So by putting the k uh, consonant in front of each of them, we then get our sort of next symbol. We can keep going, right? So sa, shi, su, se, so etc. Okay, so whenever we're pronouncing sounds in Japanese, these are the sounds that we need to try and make sure that we use. Um, there are others, but those are really important ones. So when you're reading Japanese in this form, so the way I've written the Japanese here is Romanji. So the Japanese language has three um, sort of written forms, which is Hiragana, Katakana and Kanji. Uh, so Kanji are the Chinese characters. Um, and are very complex to kind of read. Uh, hiragana is like the alphabet. Um, so for example, E in Hiragana is, looks like that. U, for example, looks like that, etc. Um, so each one has a specific symbol. And Katakana is uh, the same, as is, is a different syllable for the same sound, but is used for like foreign words. Um, so um, that's basically the three written languages. When we write Japanese language in English, okay, or Romanized language, uh, using the letters of the alphabet, then we call that Romanji. So each of these are written in Romanji, so we're not going to get into the complexities of kind of the written form. So when you're reading these words, break each bit down. So the first word we're going to look at is the word waza. And so break that into two bits. So you have wa, so there's our sound, a, and then za, so waza. What you don't want to do is say it like two separately or like along the words. So it shouldn't be like wa, za, so waza. So waza is techniques. Okay, so what we can do is put the word waza at the end of any one of these words here. So we're going to look at 
some different categories of technique. So in a normal lesson, your teacher might say that you're going this lesson to practice Kihon Waza. So Kihon is basic techniques. So that is a particularly common word that you'll hear used particularly in karate jo dojos or aikido dojos. So Kihon Waza, basic techniques. Other terms can be kind of, sometimes are used interchangeably. Like there is a term in, in Kabudo that's used, which is Hojundo. Hojundo doesn't technically mean basics, it technically means like supplementary training. Um, so it's slightly different. So Kihon is basics. So Kihon was a basic techniques. The next one we have is Tsuki, okay, Ski. So Ski is usually translated as punching techniques, okay? Uh, but it can, of course, it can also be kind of thrusting techniques as well. Um, so, uh, for example, we might have Gyakazuki. And at this point, I want to just make a, a sort of a slight little add-on. When we put these words into another word, so, for example, if I was going to say basic front punch, uh, so one way of doing that, do my example here, would be Junzuki. Okay, so... Uh, jun is the first bit, so it basically means standard, uh, and zuki is the same as this bit here, ski. And what's happened is the tsu sound, when it's put as part of the word, changes to a zu sound. So um, in terms of if you were writing it, just to kind of show the connection, tsu as a symbol uh, looks like this, and to turn it into zu, you put like a little speech mark in the top right hand corner and that changes the sound. So Suki and Zuki, there's a slight difference in the pronunciation, but it's the distinction between when it's part of the word or when it's on its own. So ski waza is punching techniques or thrusting techniques. Um, so uke waza is often translated as locking techniques. Okay, that is the kind of common uh, understanding of it. That isn't technically what it means. It comes from the word ukeru, which means to receive. So it literally means receiving techniques. Uh, but in English, we often translate it as blocking. So you can get into the differences between blocking and receiving. Uh, but generally speaking, we think of this word when we translate Japanese into English as like head block, for example. Um, so we kind of use that terminology more often than like head receive. We don't tend to say that, although that is the meaning. Keri waza, so the K is the clue. So keriwaza is kicking techniques. Okay, now this is an important one because if I give you an example of this word, so if I just use our first direction here, so mae, so mae, mae, so mae means front. So one of the first kind of basic techniques you learn, say in most karate dojos for example, would be mae geri. Okay. Now you'll notice again, just like with that ski to zuki, keri has changed to geri. Now geri on its own, if you just say that bit, means diarrhea. So you don't want to say that on its own. But it's okay when you say it again as part of the word. So if you're saying kicking techniques, it would be keri waza. But if you're saying keri in, within a word, change it to uh, ge sound. So maie geri, mawashi geri rather than keri, that would be too, a har too harsh a sound. So keri was a kicking technique. Um, moving on, next one, so nage was a, so nage is throwing techniques. More specifically, nage means to project. Um, so there are, there are two fundamental types of throwing techniques, nage or otasu, which means to drop. Um, so, Nage waza is the sort of broad name for throwing techniques, but it actually it is a category of. Shime, shime means to close. So you could say, uh, door o shime. So, close the door, right? Um, shime is a word, if we think about in terms of what you're doing to a person, another attacker, and you're trying to close them, it is used in the context of chokes or strangles. So it's to like cut off blood supply, cut off air, so shime means literally to close, but in martial arts vernacular, shime waza 
basically is chokes or strangles or asphyxiations, which is also a subcategory. Okay, Newaza is ground biting or ground techniques. Okay. Uh, but when we, do, we talk about Nawaza, we're talking about techniques that we do on the floor. And lastly, although this list can keep going and there are many, many others, so we can have locking techniques, etc. But the last one is Renraku, which is combination techniques. So Renraku Waza means combinations. Now, on this particular word, there are a couple of variants of this word that you occasionally hear as well. So we have Renraku but we can also have uh, Renza, for example, or Renzoku. So all of these words are quite similar. Uh, distinction, so Renraku is combinations. Renza or Renzoku means continuous. So you might say this, for example, in the context of like continuous kumite. So um, Renza kumite, for example. Um, so. Kumite is probably one more that I will add. Uh, so as a bonus one, just because you've watched this long. So kumite. Okay, so kumite means like fighting techniques. So te is obviously hands, so you can also have like kumi bo, which would be fighting with the bo. Uh, but kumite basically means fighting. There are other words that we could use for fighting, like randori. Uh, but kumite is sort of a very simple term for it. So those are our different types of technique. Now the reason that's important is the way that Japanese language is structured, certainly for the dojo, is very simple in terms of putting words together. So we've already seen, for example, if I now start to use these directions, so maya, geri, that becomes front kick, okay? I could say maya, tsuki, okay? That would be literally front punch, although there are other words that are often used for that instead. Um, so our other directions become very helpful to us. So we have maya geri, front kick. Another important one is ushiro, which means back. So ushiro, so back. So back kick is ushiro geri, okay? Uh, yoko means side. So many styles have yoko geri, side kick. Sometimes you hear other words used interchangeably with yoko geri, sometimes distinctly. So another word that's say, used for sidekick sometimes is sokoto chudan. Sokoto doesn't mean side, sokoto means the edge of the foot. So if we're talking about sokoto or yoko geri, there is a difference in the language, but if you wanted just literally to say sidekick, you would say yoko geri. Okay, next. These aren't really directions now, but they're words that we kind of use in that kind of way. So, soto means outer. So, for example, we might have soto uke. So, soto uke means outer block. Age means to rise. And so, this is used in lots of different ways. So, another type of technique that I haven't mentioned here is empi. So, empi was it is elbow techniques. So I could say, for example, age MP, rising elbow, yoko MP, side elbow, uh, ushiro MP, backwards. Okay, so you can start to build up your techniques this way. Uchi is the opposite of soto, it means inner. It can mean several other things as well. So uchi also can mean strike. Um, so you might say, for example, uh, shuto, which uh, is usually translated as like knife hand. So shuto uke is knife hand block. Shuto uchi is knife hand strike. So uchi can also mean strike, but often we just use inner as well. So there's two main meanings. Again, there are others, but those are the two sort of main we use in the dojo context. Now, in terms of these two, you can have soto uke, outer block, or uchi uke, in a block that varies from style to style. So, for example, in uh, Wadaru or in uh, Gojuru, for example, this is usually Soto Uke. 
and Uchi UK is usually this way. In Shotokan, usually they are reversed. So this is Uchi UK and this is Soto UK. Um, and it really just comes down to different ways of using language, the same way we would use English. So when I was a child, I remember when my teacher first said, this from here to there is outer block, Soto UK. I remember thinking that was strange because in my head as a child, I thought well, it starts on the inside of my body and comes out. So in my kind of, I, I sort of think, well, surely because it starts on the inside, that should be inner block. Um, that was my way of thinking of it. But obviously you can flip that logic and go the other way around. So different dojos will sometimes use these kind of back to front and that's okay. Main thing is to kind of understand how it's used within your dojo. Um, in terms of trying to put to bed the argument which way around it should be, well, there isn't the correct answer to that because it's down to personal preference in the dojo. However, as a rule, we use Soto Unuchi in lots of techniques for naming. So we can have simple things like Soto Uke, outer block, but we could also have, for example, throwing techniques that come later, for example, O Soto Gari, which means major outer reaping throw or back hock as it's often translated. Uh, it's basically where you sweep with the leg. Um, and the Soto bit, you can see there, means that the, the throwing technique is done on the outside of the body. And it's an outside in relation to the centre line of your opponent. There are other throwing techniques like Soto Makikomi, outer winding throw. And again, Soto is done in relation to the centre line. So when, in our dojo, when we talk about Soto UK, it means outer because it's going away from your centre line and Uchi when it comes towards your centre line. But like you say, Different dojos can have different uh, rationale, and that's totally okay. Same as they could call the same thing in English back to front. So we can start to put these together then, just before we do the last bit. So we've done some examples of blocking techniques. I've mentioned MP techniques. Um, you can use um, the parts of these words in m bigger names. So for example, uh, a shime waza that we have is hadaka jime. So again, one of these changing sounds, shi can change to ji. So hadaka jime means bar choke, but you can have maya hadaka jime, ushiro hadaka jime. So whether you attack from the front or from behind, or even at the side of the neck. So you can use these to name bigger techniques later on. Um, so, lots of other examples that you could pick out from that. Um, but the other thing we want to be able to do, rather than just say, okay, I'm going to do a front kick, so my Mayageri, is where am I doing that front kick? So then we use targets. So I'm not going to go into all the anatomical targets in this video, but we are going to talk about the three basic heights that we often use. Um, so Dan means like step or level, uh, so we have the kind of the three. So Jo means like upper step or level. So, um, Jordan usually refers to from sort of the Roman bust upwards, so kind of the very tops of the shoulders going right up. It isn't just head, head is atama, but Jordan means upper level. Chu means middle, so Chu Dan is middle level. And so usually that refers to any kind of target from the Roman bust down to about belt or hip height. And then Gedan is the lower level, okay? Uh, so usually that refers to any technique that goes down. So you could do, for example, uh, looking at some basic punches. So the ski waza, you could do ski Jordan, Chudan, or Gedan. And so you can just name the heights like that. You can do the same thing with kicks. So you could do Mayageli Chudan, or Mayageli Gedan, or Mayageli Jordan. Depending on your height, you're just indicating the target. Um, and you could do that with any of the, like, say, basic kicking techniques, like Yoko Gedi, any of those, Shiro Gedi back kick. Again, you can do it two or three heights. So these words will get you a long way when you're starting out with Japanese. If you can understand these words, you can use them and you will start to hear them used in lots and lots of techniques. So we've talked about O Soto Gari, you can hear that Soto bit in there. There's also O Uchi Gari, uh, there is Uchi Makikomi, there is 
Agayenpi. Uh, there is uh, lots of different shimewazas, so hadaka jime, juji jime, cross strangle. So you hear these words again and again and again. And so the more you can pick them out, the easier that will become. So if your teacher said to you, junzuki, the fact that you can hear the zuki bit means straight away, even though if you're not entirely sure what the technique is, you know it's a punch. So if I said junzuki, gyakazuki, furizuki, urizuki, morotezuki, all of those techniques, without even knowing what they are, you know they're a punch. So that helps an awful lot when you're trying to kind of follow along and understand the instructions. Same with keriwaza. So maegeri, mawashigeri, yokogeri, ushirogeri, mikazuki geri, nirangeri. They're all using that same word to indicate whatever type of kick it is, you know it's a kick. So knowing the types of technique is really helpful and knowing the directions kind of puts it into context when you're kind of doing your opponent, why is it named this way? And it's usually named in a very logical and kind of systematic way. I hope that helps, um, particularly if you're starting out in like trying to understand martial Japanese. Uh, my Japanese is not perfect. Um, I studied Japanese at university and when I was in Japan, I would say that my Japanese is was good enough to survive. Like my proudest achievement was going into a bank and then being sent to another bank and then having to find another ATM before going back another few miles to where I was. And like being able to have simple conversations is, um, you just need some basic skills and you just need to practice it. And the best thing with any kind of language is to immerse yourself in it. Um, so I hope that by doing this, that I can sort of share some of the things that I found really useful when I was first starting out. And I know that I'm absolutely still on this journey to keep learning all this Japanese which fascinates me. Um, so if you have any questions, I will try my absolute best to give you an answer. And if I can't, I will go and find out and work at it. And you know, I know plenty of people that can speak Japanese far better than me. Uh, but this will give you some basics, definitely for the dojo that you can use. I will say one final thing, is that you might find in different dojos, you use different bits of terminology for the same techniques. And that's totally okay. So a little bit like we said, soto, soto uke, or each you get. Another example would be head block. So some dojos will call that jordan, like upper, uke, blocking technique, so head block. Um, although obviously head, as we know, isn't jordan, but that's how we often translate it. Lots of other dojos will call that age uke, rising block, and both are okay. Uh, junzuki, which is standard or basic punch, as we often translate it, uh, which is usually like that, and some dojos is in fact Yakazuki, uh, and is also called Oitsuki. So again, it's a different term for the same word. So main thing is if you're unsure about any of these and think, oh, I've never heard that word, check with your sensei about what, lang uh, what particular version of their language, which word they're using in your dojo, and obviously go with that when you're training. As always, if you've got any questions, don't forget to ask. Please like the video, please share it with everyone else that you know is trying to get their teeth into Japanese. And I will see you in the next video, guys.